Morning guys, Bob Murphy again. Um, welcome. We're going to be talking today about uh, rebreathers, both semi-closed rebreathers and closed circuit rebreathers, um, and how they work. A very, very basic understanding of how they work. Yeah. Um, and then we're going to build one on the board. Okay. So let's start off with this. Why is it important to you? Well, it's important to you because rebreathers is probably the the nicest thing we can do as divers. Uh, if you aspire to doing that, it can give you great times underwater with ideal decompression, it can vary your gases. It's a nice way to dive. It's not for everybody, it's for some. Let's start off. We're gonna build one using household appliances, okay? What we're gonna do first is we're gonna get the, the hose from your vacuum cleaner. And we're gonna go around here like this. We're going to put a mouthpiece in it, just like the mouthpiece on your regulator, like that. And around like that. And here's the hose. There you go, a piece of vacuum cleaner hose. Okay. Now, in here, we're going to put some valves. A little bit like the valve in the end of your snorkel that allows the water to be shot out of the snorkel. So we're going to put one here which allows the air to go that way, and one of those here, which allows the air to go that way. Now, if I now put this in my mouth, I'll breathe in air from here, and I'll breathe out whatever I breathe out down that tube there. The beginning of my rebreather. Okay. Over here, I'm going to attach a plastic bag yeah, with, some, with some duct tape, I think. Yeah. And over here, I'm going to attach another one. Two plastic bags. It's cheap, this rebreather. And between those two plastic bags, I'm going to put a tube. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay, now, this is not gonna keep you alive. As you can see, if you were to breathe in, now I just built it in, in on this whiteboard, and there's air in here. If I were to breathe in now, I would take in air, I would breathe out whenever I breathe out, a great deal of the air that I breathed in, plus some carbon dioxide, and less than 21%. And if that was to then go through the tube in the middle and mix with this one, my second breath would be less than 21%, yeah, plus carbon dioxide. Yeah. So you can see I have a problem, I have two problems. My first problem is the carbon dioxide. I want to eliminate that problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a filter in here. Now, it doesn't matter what it's called, it's called an adsorbent, but it doesn't matter what that's called. And what that's going to do is take away the CO2. Fantastic. Otherwise, I would have become hypercapnic, if you remember that word. Hyper over capnic relates to CO2. Okay, so I've eliminated the hypercapnia. I now have another, that my second problem, which is this. Eventually, I'm going to deplete the oxygen supply. So what I'm going to do about that I'm going to add a tank. In my particular case, a very small tank. Add a tank to this plastic bag, fire hoses or whatever. Yeah. I'm going to put on this tank a special flow regulator. When I turn that tank on, it's going to go. Into here constantly. Now, what's in that tank? It depends really on what rebreather, but for example, in this tank, I've got 50% oxygen. Just one example. So it's enriched air, it's higher than your 40. So what happens now? Well, I turn it on, and obviously this gas goes in here. Yeah. So potentially I go, I go over to my rebreather, I sit down, I've been turned on for a few minutes, I breathe in, and maybe, my first breath is 50% oxygen. 
When I breathe out, I breathe out less than 50. And then that all filters through and it weakens this mix a little bit. Yeah. In my study to be qualified on this free breather, yeah, I've actually worked out the flow rate and when my breathing settles down, how much this will settle down to. Yeah. And I've worked out in this particular case that if I breathe normally, when I've breathed up this for several breaths, uh, this one's going to settle down to 37%. Cool. Unless I do something unexpected, like work very hard, or start to hold my breath. Okay. If I breathe normally, that's where it will be. Cool. That's pretty good. However, obviously if this tank is still constantly going into this bag, regardless of how much I breathe, this bag is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, and it's going to go bang. Yeah. So what we're going to put on this bag is something very similar to the dump valve on your BCD. And what that's going to do, it's adjustable, it's going to go or you could tighten up so it goes That's what that is. And that is what makes my rebreather semi-closed. Uh, occasionally, every few seconds, it releases some bubbles because of this expansion of this bag. Okay. Now, this is good because these aren't so common, these days, semi-closed rebreathers. There are a few around. Uh, they don't look like this. They look nicer than this. However, I would like to go one stage further. I would like a closed circuit rebreather. This was cool. I could get closer to fish. I could take better photographs perhaps. But I want to close one. I want to make any bubbles at all. So take away that number, that number, and that number. I'm gonna take away this. Now as you can see, there was nothing particularly clever about that last rebreather. Let me put another tank on here. There it is. Okay. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put two gases. Now, just for the sake of argument, it's not the way you necessarily would do it. I'm gonna put oxygen in that one, and I'm gonna put a gas we haven't used yet, helium in that one. Helium is breathable. It's also a little less narcotic than nitrogen. I'm going to leave this dump valve here. I'll explain why later. Okay, now, in this particular case, there are several ways you could do this. I'm going to go for the laziest way. I'm going to take three electronic analyzers, A, A, A. I'm going to put them in that bag there. I'm going to connect those analyzers, in this case via cable, to my computer on my wrist. A big computer. I'm also going to connect my computer to my two tanks. Okay. So now, I have to make that a different colour. One second. Get that computer connection in there. Cool. Now I'm going to tell my computer Hey, I would like, just for my, my particular dive, I would like a partial pressure oxygen of 1.0. That's what I want you to do for me. So my computer, it asks the analyzers. The reason there are three is in case they disagree, just for safety. There's three analyzers in my rebreather. It says to the analyzers, what have we got? And the analyzers say, well, Right now, we just built this, we've got 21. So the computer says, well, that's not what I want. I'm sitting on the boat, I'm at one atmosphere, I want one atmosphere of oxygen. So the computer goes up here and opens the oxygen tank. Shh, until these three read 100, one bar partial pressure. And then the computer says, stop. There's 100% in there. 
and I can go now, I can sit down, I can do all my checks, I can start breathing from my rebreather. Again, it doesn't look like this, it looks nicer than this. Now, as I, now I have a, so the CO2 is dealt with. There's 100% in here now. Right? Let's put that in. 100. Okay, so I go to my dive site. I've done all my checks, I'm with my buddy. And I start to descend. As my pressure increases, my computer says, oh, hold on. Your partial pressure oxygen is now over one. Your pressure is over one. As you descend, your pressure starts to increase. And what the, what the computer then does is says, hey, I need to decrease the partial pressure of oxygen. So, it opens the second bottle. And basically, for want of a better explanation, it waters down that mixture. So when you get to 10 meters, 10 meters, as you know, is two atmospheres. And my computer says, I want one of those atmospheres to be oxygen. So I've got two atmospheres, one must be oxygen. So at 10 meters, 10 meters, my rebreather is gonna give me 50% oxygen. One atmosphere out of the two that are available. Yeah? If I go to 30 meters, yeah, as you know, that's four atmospheres. One of those four needs to be oxygen. So it's going to be 25% oxygen. Yeah. On this particular rebreather. If I go to 90 meters, yeah, my rebreather, one atmosphere out of the 10 must be oxygen. 10% oxygen. As I come up from these depths, my computer will adjust back to these. It will say, hey, okay. your, your partial pressure is going to drop below one as you ascend, and it will start to enrich this bag here as you come up. Now, this is a closed circuit rebreather because I'm swimming around at 90 meters. I breathe out, the CO2 is taken away, yeah. any oxygen or helium is added according to my variation in depth or gas use, not very much is needed, yeah. and off we go again. The only time that this closed circuit rebreather is going to make bubbles is when I start to ascend. Because physics says when I start to extend these flexible bags yeah, are going to expand and potentially go bang. So they need uh, to allow that gas to escape. So we still have a, a dump valve here or a, or a pressure relief valve here. Yeah. The other cool thing about rebreathers, if I put my me in here, the diver, uh, my head is here, this is one of my lungs, and this is the other one. Uh, when I breathe in, the air goes from these two bags called counter lungs, uh, this volume here is flexible, into my flexible balloons, my, my, my lungs. When I breathe out, the air from these two bags goes into these two bags. Yeah. Which means that my breathing does not really affect my depth in the water. I carry all that volume in the breathing loop, this is called. Yeah. Unless I do something odd, like I clear my mask, then I've lost air from inside this closed loop, and that would cause me to lose a little bit of points. I hope that explains rebreathers. And, you know, yeah. As I said, not how they design them, but a nice pictorial of what they do and how they do it. And this is only one example of how rebreathers work. There are many examples. Ask your um, instructor. Maybe he knows somebody who teaches these things and help you out. Yeah. Very cool place to be.